Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, uh, another video in our series of videos dealing with uh, portfolio theory, uh, is going to, I suppose, uh, develop the concept of the efficient frontier for a two-stock portfolio. Uh, in other words, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to identify the portfolio, uh, which is going to be a mixture of two stocks, Okay? Uh, that gives us the best return for the for the least amount of risk. In other words, we're going to try to find a portfolio that has uh, the maximum return uh, with the with the minimum amount of variance. Okay? <coughs> and there's a set of formulas that we use to uh, do this particular calculation. Uh, I suppose just in relation to, uh, let's just have a look at our basic things. Let's say we have two portfolios of returns, let's say uh, symbolized by R1 and R2, okay? R1 being the being the set of returns for, for the first asset and R2 being the set of returns for the for the second asset. But uh, well, what we can do quite easily is we can calculate the expected the expected value uh, of the of the first asset's uh, returns and we can also calculate the variance of those particular values. And similarly, we can calculate the expected value uh, of the returns of the second asset uh, along with its variance and we can also calculate the correlation between uh, both sets of both sets of uh, returns okay? uh, so these are let's say things that we would need to have beforehand before we can actually go and actually try to construct uh, our most optimum uh, two asset portfolio so let's just assume that we have them and let me just actually give these values for let's just say uh, the the expected return of portfolio one or of asset one is three percent and let's say that its variance, let's just say its variance is is 1.5 percent. Okay, let's say for portfolio two that its return is let's say 5 uh, percent, and let's say that its variance, let's say, is a little bit, let's say even let's say smaller. Well, there's not too much smaller. Let's say 4.2, and let's say just for argument's sake that the correlation between them is 0 0.5. Okay, there's a positive association between both assets. Just for for this for this particular purposes, we'll actually change these values in a moment, and we'll see how the efficient frontier is actually affected through change of of these values, in particular the correlation coefficient, uh, which is the strength of association between uh, both both of our assets. Okay, so to construct this uh, two uh, this two asset portfolio, uh, well, really to construct it, what we need to do is we need to find out how much of the first uh, asset we're putting into the portfolio and how much of the second asset we're going to put into the portfolio, which are determined by the weights. Okay, we're going to call the amount or the proportion of the first one going in W one. Okay, let's say uh, W one. And uh, we're going to call the proportion of the second one W2. Okay. Uh, so the real question that we really have is can we can we identify uh, oops, let me just move this across here. I just want to make this uh, centered. Okay. Uh, can we identify the most optimum weights yet with respect to the proportion of asset one and asset two that needs to be composed uh, in the portfolio? And that's what we're trying to do now today by looking at the efficient frontier. But what we want to calculate is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to consider, let's say, 10 possible combinations of the weights. Now, the important thing is that the sum of the weights must add up to one. So if we're putting 100% in W1, uh, of sorry, 100% of asset one into the portfolio and zero of asset two. Well, then the weight here will be will be one zero. Okay. Uh, if we're putting 90% of asset one in, well, then it'll be 0 0.9. Uh, 0 0.1. If we're putting 80%, it'll be 0 0.8. It'll be 0 0.2. You can see that the sum of the weights actually add up to, add up to 1 in all cases. 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.4. Actually, what I'll do is, I think if I just drag that down, that should actually complete that particular series for me. Uh, so I'm just highlighting that, and I'm just going to drag it down, down to here, and you actually see that the series is actually being completed for me. Okay, so here's my here are my weights, okay, uh, for each of the possible portfolios. In other words, I'm going to construct ten portfolios, or let's see, uh, I'm going to actually construct eleven portfolios, okay, uh, and I'm going to try to find out from those eleven portfolios that have been determined by these particular weights. Okay, that's the first portfolio's weighting, uh, weighting, let's say relation. That's the second one. This is the third portfolio, and so on. From these, I'm going to try to find the one that has the minimum variance, okay. Uh, and also uh, gives us uh, the largest expected return at that minimum variance. Uh, 
So to do this, what we need to do first of all is we need to calculate the expected value okay, of the portfolio based off the two weights. And we have a formula for that, which says that the expected value of our portfolio is simply equal to the summation okay, of how much of asset one we're putting into the portfolio of its expected return plus how much of assets two's expected return we're putting into the portfolio. In other words, it's a proportion W1 of the expected return for asset one plus the proportion W2 of the expected return of asset two, which is straightforward to do. We know E or one 